Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. Anyway, if you look at this photograph even further, you can see little coal trucks there. And you can actually see, if you follow this line here all the way around, the building seems to stop there and you've got this massive gap. Then it starts again there. So that little bit we saw in the photograph last week where you've got a skylight on, it wasn't there in this photograph. This photograph was taken pre-war, pre-Second World War. Because you can still see the clock tower here. You can still see the fascia here. And it's virtually all intact. There's a great big warehouse building here. Now the station slope finishes there and goes around. And then you've got this great big gap and then starts again. So the photographs I've been looking at of 1960s, 1970s and this is what I need to be looking at. But whether I keep this bit here um, that I do not know. So this photograph here interests me quite a bit uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it gives you a lot more detail what's going on here. You can see three windows there. And you can see a lot more of these pillars. Now I'm not going to have all that because I haven't got the platform room where I've had to shorten it. Uh, a little bit. Um, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But another thing, it's very rare to see two sets of DMUs in platform one. Now this reminds me of the time when I was a little lad taken out for the day and uh, I almost got on the wrong train, a little lad of six. Getting really excited, oh yeah I want to go on a train. and. Uh, I nearly ended up in Sunderland, actually I think that would have been the Sunderland bound one, this was the Newcastle bound one. Yeah, happy days. Last but not least, um, we're looking at this photograph, looking um, northbound I would say, towards the station. And if we look closely you can see a lot of interesting features here. You can see straight away that the clock tower is in place. So this would have been taken pre-war, probably in the 1930s, leading up to the war. But then again, if you look at all these um, advertising bollards, was has there already been a raid, um, or is that just building work going on? Um, we don't know. Don't know. But uh, the face is intact. And the one thing I know by looking at this fascia, it's it's not white. I'm just wondering if it's any or red. Uh, well, if, if it was white, it'd be like this one. It'd be a lot more brighter to look at. Um, and another interesting fact here about this photograph is this wooden fence along here. And. Um, from each corner of the wall, from that corner to this corner, there's a wooden fence, and then they've got a tree, a couple of trees, shrubs behind it, and all these little old fashioned advertising bollards or boards. Yeah, interesting photograph. This is where we left off from last week, finishing off the columns and butting them into this brick wall here on the corner. And uh, as you can see, that'll look quite nice when it's finished because obviously, once you get the brick paper in wrapped around, this will all blend in. So that's this corner done, and I'm quite happy with that. So we've got to move on to the other end, which is up there somewhere. Right, so here we are at the other end, and as you can see straight away, this is going to be a lot, lot different to what it is in the photographs because we've only got 
three pillars rather than at least six. The reason being is, is what I've done here. I've cut this back too far when I first put this in back in January. Um, but uh, I'm not going to change it now. It'll be too much uh, work to hack this off because it's screwed down and glued and then remaking it all again. So it would be too much hassle to do that. Anyway, the groundsmen have been in and they've um, cut away the greenery ready for the card to drop in. So that'll be the next bit. To fix this pillar up here and work out how I'm going to blend the three bits of card coming off this beam into possibly just the two bits of card here to make it the same as that one over there because if you look at the thickness of that one you've got two bits of card in the center and a third on the side there but that's only one mil so uh, and you've got one mil card on the other side so yeah it'll probably work it'll probably work i'll have to work that out as we go to the uh, design department and they've come up with this idea for the wall um, what we've just been looking at um, obviously this wall is going to be two card thicknesses so it'll be four mil so you have this is the outer card and the one highlighted in the dotted line is the card behind as you can see there and the main support beam with the columns on when it comes up against the wall here what we'll do is we'll let because it's three layered card this is it's a three layer card we'll cut one layer back the other two layers will be glued to this wall and then um, there'll be a one mil card running up to form the pattern of a pillar like we do here so it looks like it's blended in um, that's the cunning plan. Here we have our supporting wall for the um, beamwork for the columns. Um, it's two layers like we had in the drawing. 15mm um, down from the top and 18mm from the bottom. So that bit there goes up against the platform. This here, this 10mm gap here is for the supporting um, main column at the end of the brick ball uh, which supports the finial. I uh, remember showing you that in the photograph last time. So the thing to do now is just to glue all these little bits and build up the end support wall. using the old PVA wood glue. Just making sure it's flush with the bottom, flush with the top, flush with the edge. Like so. So here we have the start of the end wall going up with the laminated cards in place now as you can see. And as you can see, there's a slight bend already as it heads towards the columns. As you can see with this overhead shot, um, it seems to want to bend from here, as it would do if it's when it's following this point here. So I've slightly curved that, and it's going to curve all the way into this wall. And I might have to slightly put a bend in this wall. Um, as long as the centre stays the same between the two walls, from here to here at 281 millimetres, and that's what I've got to try and achieve. If I can do that all the way through from there, all right the way through to the end of there, and I'll be happy because that will make my life a lot easier when I come to build the, um, the main apex roof. 
So as you can see, I'm getting a, a rough setup here on what's going to happen to the top support beam. Now, here I've got to notch it to drop it down to the same width as that, carry it across, and then continue that effect for the last three um, partitions, if you like. So that's just giving me a rough idea of what's happening beyond the footbridge. As you can see, I'm in the middle of making this support beam. And I'm just gluing the final piece of card together. Um, and then we can see what it looks like when, when it's uh, together. We're nearly there. I've already put some glue on that half. Well, normally, if I'm doing something like this, with it's going to be structural. I always like to think I'm giving it plenty of strength by gluing the both halves together. So as you can see that end there is going to slot into the support beam that's already made with the columns on it. So all I've got to do now is trim this down um, and then mark out the centres where the other columns are going to go. I have now marked out the beam ready for cutting. And uh, all the red sections are the bits I've got to cut out. And this piece here which connects to the wall. Um, I'm sure I did this last week. So it's all more or less the same as what I did last week. The only difference being is I'm cutting out this piece here to make it narrower to go over the footbridge and the rest of it is more or less the same as. So it's time to start cutting. I shall do this one first then we'll try it on the brick wall. Right, so I have the wall here and I'm trying it out and it seems to fit a treat. And let's see there, if you could imagine this being um, fitted with card and maybe three windows in there. And what I'll do is I'll put another um, two mil piece in there, card, um, same width as the pillars and it'll help blend in as it goes along. So I'll just flip it over. This is looking from the back. As you can see, we still have the support um, up against the wall here, because you've got the other wall running this way into it. I have glued this beam to this beam and it's been left overnight so the glue can harden. Uh, I haven't glued the pillars yet. Now the thing I'm trying to achieve here is to try and keep the radius because um, it's straight until this point here and then it curves into the station and then straightens up about here. So I'm trying to keep the centers correct here from this point to this point which is 100, uh, 281 millimeters and which is exactly the same as what we've got at the other end right at the back there. So now that that's done and I'm happy with it um, all the joints seem to match um, I can now focus on gluing these into the main beam support and finish it off to that same standard over there. Right, so the next step is to infill the spaces between the pillars. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it last time in the last video. Um, basically all I've done is I've stuck some mid-calf card to some one millimeter card which then brings it up to the same height as the pillars. Now this one's a little bit easier because obviously there's no concrete plinth in there so that'll just go in there and then obviously with the rest of them we have the concrete plinths. Now 
I don't think I mentioned this in the last video, but I don't know if you noticed, but I'm using two different types of Metcalf card. This card here is the older one. In 2019, they changed their brick paper for some reason. Because um, the old sheets, you used to get these, which were handy for, for windows. But the new sheets, I'll just show you. You don't get that now. You just get the blue um, plinth on the bottom. You get nothing on the top. It's a shame they changed their design. So as you see, I'm having to stand this up to do this bit because I want to keep the curve. Um, I think if I laid it flat and did it, it would end up flat. And when I come to curve it, um, all the card strips were there that start gaping open or creasing. So it's best, if you're doing a curve, try and keep the curve um, the best way you can. And uh, I think in this situation, by keeping it upright, instead of laying it flat, otherwise that end will drop down and it'll all end up flat and you, you won't be able to keep the curve. So I just thought I'd quickly show you this while I uh, put this piece of card in. Because I've shaped it to suit, as you can see. Just move that closer to the camera, you can actually see the, the curve. so right so I'm just going to check the centers between the two walls um, this side always flexes a little bit so I'll just push that up against the platform and we'll just measure the inside to inside and that's 280 millimeters there and hopefully that should be 290 there yep it's 280 mil there so where it starts to bend we should have something similar we've got 278 there so i've lost two millimeters there but i might be able to pull that back on the curve and try and follow it around and it comes back to 280 there 281 there but mind you i haven't got the extra little bit of card that runs along the top there so that may change and see what we've got here and that's 280 there so it's it's virtually parallel with each other which is good slight difference here but I think it's because here I don't know if you've noticed before in the videos when that beam was put in it was bent, but now it seems to have strained out a little bit. But this, let's just measure it off the canopy. Let's measure it off the canopy from there. 288. What have we got here? 280, 287. What have we got in the middle? 285. 285. So basically this is more accurate to the canopy than it is with the um, actual um, steel beam there. Which is good in a way because we want to be able to hide all that beam when I come to put the big roof on. That's the last of the columns done. Um, so this is finished up to the same point as those others are finished. So all these columns just require weathering now. And I'm maybe doing something with the cement to tone it down a bit. A bit too um, darkish grey. It looks like the cement's wet and it's ready to fall down. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so... Let me just show you a future project because uh, I had a few comments wondering where am I going to go from here once I've finished with the uh, 
station. Um, this area you don't um, get to see a lot of because when I fill in them, the trains going in and out to sow shields I'm normally here so you don't see what's going on below the rails uh, as you can see that's the entrance into the fiddle yard which is just below the sow shields board as you can see and um, this area here has been an I saw for, for as long as I can remember and um, this is what I'm proposing to do here um, just let me show you what it is uh, I'm going to put a road in around here comes across the tracks these two tracks are going to be removed they're going to be cut back and eventually I'm going to use this shed convert it and build into it a little factory as it were on the side so that building then becomes my little dairy so that's just one of the projects that I'll be looking to do if I'm not doing anything else with the um, station so if I come to a stop uh, I've still got lots to do here because it's not only just the road there's the tunnel mouse to make here so I'm going to put in a new piece of wood here to to link up the tunnel mouth form a brick wall around to about here then stop and the baseboard should finish at the end of here because I want this bit left open for accessibility just in case anything um, well in case I would crash in there or anything like that you never know when running trains so yeah so that's a future project. That's the end wall done and uh, it's no different to wrapping the card around the pillars. Um, it's done a quite neat job of it actually. Um, the good thing about it is you can't see the dovetail joint. It's in there. It's not glued yet. Um, I mean, there's no windows going in this end, so I could glue that in there now, um, and then it's it's done. But I still got to um, lighten the concrete, so I think I'll do that first. So I'm just using white humbrol just to lighten up the concrete because um, it's a bit on the dark side I'm just quickly wiping it off as quickly as I put it on and it seems to work um, judging by that one there if you look at that one and then look at that one it has lined up a little bit so yeah I'm, I'm quite happy with that so I shall continue with that with the rest of them I have mixed up some um, solution 50-50 uh, PVU with a little bit of acrylic black just to do around the base of these columns just to darken them a little bit because it always gets dirty around the base of the columns and then just take it off with, with a cotton bud It doesn't look a lot, but it just dirties them up a little bit. As you can see, my windows have arrived today, um, and here they are. They're going to need cutting down. They are blacked framed, um, which I'm not too bothered about, because it's very hard to find windows uh, this shape. Um, in white. Now if we have a look at the photograph again as you can see in the photograph they are white but these are a very very close resemblance you could almost match them for pattern 
but they're in the black but I'm not too bothered about that I mean I could go over them again but I could end up mucking them up so I'll leave them as they are so the interesting part is cutting them out because I only want the top three panes so I've uh, never done this before this plastic is quite hard so I'm going to see if I can just keep scoring it and then eventually just snap it I've got a bit of tissue underneath and underneath the ruler I've got a bit of tissue there as well just so I don't um, scratch them so I'm going to give this a go So I'm just going to keep scoring it and eventually, hopefully, I'll be able to cut through them. If it works then happy days. Perseverance is the game here I think. through hopefully that should just snap now yep one down and another eight to go that's all I was after just the top half um, as you can see there's a little bit of a flange around the window so I want to lose that and the reason being is when I've come to put the brick sheeting onto the wall um, I want to be able to push the window through like we did with the station windows so that has got to be removed um, it's perseverance again just by keep scoring and scoring and scoring till it eventually breaks um, curved bits a little bit tri trickier you've got to take your time but you can get there and it just snaps off um, I've already done one already complete to, to remove all the flanging as you can see Well, as you can see with this window, I've had a little bit of a disaster with it. Um, what's happened is I was trying to put a window frame around the window and the smallest amount of glue on the window just takes the paint off and the whole window goes cloudy. And that's just uh, polyurethane cement. So I've done away with that idea. So all I'm going to do is just put a window sill on them now and fit the windows as it is. Um, I think it'd be this, it'd be even worse with super glue, I think. So that's the uh, plan for these windows. There's something interesting I found with this photograph. Um, these large windows here are slightly higher than the standard windows like we have over in platform one. So if I just put the rule across you'll see the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this rule with the just covering the framework and it's just resting on the windowsill there on both of those window seals so that gives me a nice straight edge right away along and if we look over here you can still see the wooden frame on the big window now if I use my scale rule to eye up where the wooden frame finishes and it's just 
roughly about just under a foot which is exactly three mil and, uh, and that's what I've done here I have raised the windows up another three mil and uh, that's the advantage of having a scale rule and photographs that are flat on and it just gives you that a little bit more detail now bearing in mind this is a slightly higher wall now the walls at the back uh, where the roof slopes down this window frame here should end up somewhere in the middle we'll find out later on when I actually come to do the rear walls we'll just have to wait and see about that okay as you can see I've cut the card out ready to take the windows uh, now that I've done that, all the cutting I can add the 10 mil um, card on the back because I won't need to press home on the flat while cutting out so I shall do that and we'll start adding the brick card as you can see I have placed the windows into the first wall and um, they haven't turned out too bad they look a bit prison like but um, I'm sure with the brick arch and the stone um, sill on the bottom I think that would um, change it That's, this is the outside wall by the way and this is the inside wall as you can see I've made a, a little bit of a start there with some bricks on the top and there's the piece of paper representing the sandstone bottom now in the photograph it does show bricks um, along the bottom but um, I'm going to use a little bit of paper instead so um, let's go and see what it looks like on the layer so we haven't done too badly this week we've made a start on the walls and we've finished the columns which is good and uh, as you can see I've got a side wall there with a window a picture ready so we haven't done too bad and uh, some brand new photographs have come to light showing some details on the rear walls which we shall go into uh, much deeply next week so um, I'd like to thank Dave Wilson for sending me the photos and uh, we'll look at them next week so I think that's all from me this week and uh, stay safe everybody and uh, I'll catch you again bye for now bye